Hey guys, this is Austin. This might not look like much, but this is a full-fledged computer that costs $10. So this is the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now that wonderful name means that not only is this one of the super cheap Raspberry Pi computers that you guys have been telling me to do videos on forever, but this is the Zero W version, which means that not only is it incredibly cheap, but it comes with both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. As you can imagine, for $10, you don't exactly get a lot in the bag. So this is the Raspberry Pi Zero itself. So right in the middle is where we have our memory and our CPU. You have a couple of micro USB ports, one of which is for power in. You have a mini HDMI out, micro SD, as well as a series of pens along the top which you can use to expand with all kinds of things. The sky really is the limit with this little guy. To give you an idea of just how tiny the Raspberry Pi Zero is, this is what it looks like next to an iPhone 7 Plus. As you can see, this is a very, very tiny little computer. There's nothing stopping you from using the Pi Zero W just like this. However, you may want to consider picking up a case to help protect it. Now, since this is pretty much brand new, there aren't a lot of cases that are specifically made for the W variant. However, you can pick up cases for the original Raspberry Pi Zero, which hopefully should work with this guy. One of the cool parts about the Raspberry Pi ecosystem is that there are tons of different accessories and cases to choose from. So this is a nice little acrylic case for our Raspberry Pi, and it also comes with a heatsink. This is really, really tiny. So this isn't strictly necessary, but it will kind of help keep this guy cool. So with all of our pieces prepped, now it's time to see if I can build a Raspberry Pi case without reading the instructions. Should be easy enough. So after a little bit of fiddling, we have our case assembled. Now the only problem is that the heatsink doesn't quite line up since this isn't made for the W, but it's still making a pretty solid connection and it should help a little bit. Something you're going to need is a USB power adapter. So the Raspberry Pi runs on micro USB power, so as long as you have an adapter that can supply at least 5 volts to the Pi, you should be good. This is a power supply specifically meant for the Raspberry Pi, but really this should work with pretty much any micro USB power adapter. If you have something laying around for your old phone for example, you should be able to just plug it in and have it work. Something else you might want is a micro USB adapter. So not only does it have micro USB for power, but it also has a full data port. So for the most part, you're probably gonna to wanna to pick up one of these guys, which is just a simple micro USB to standard USB. But if you want more ports than that, you can also pick up a little hub that actually has four full-size USB ports on it. Something else you might want is a mini HDMI adapter. Now this isn't strictly necessary if you already have a mini HDMI cable or another adapter, but essentially this just plugs right into the port on the Raspberry Pi and will give you a full HDMI out for something like a TV or a monitor. Last but not least, you're going to need a micro SD card. Now you consider this to be essentially your hard drive for your Raspberry Pi. So right now I have an 8 gig card, but essentially this is where you're going to have your operating system and all your files live. For software, we're installing Raspbian. Now this is a lightweight Linux distribution that's specifically meant for the Raspberry Pi, and I'll have a link to not only download it, but also a full setup tutorial in the description. But it's pretty straightforward. Just load up on an SD card and we should be good to go. So if you're using a higher end Raspberry Pi, there actually is a version of Windows that's available. However, it's pretty stripped down, and honestly, you're probably going to get more use out of some sort of Linux for this guy. Two hours later. So we are now up and running with the Pi Zero W. So this version of Linux is fairly basic, but we still do have a lot of stuff that you would expect, including stuff like a web browser. Come on, little guy, you got it. Go, 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 go. That single core power. It's also funny, you can see up here, a little meter for CPU usage. As soon as you go to even think about opening a page, it immediately goes to 100%. But as you can see, we're pretty much up and running. So we can scroll, maybe a little bit slowly, but this is a proper web browser. Now comes the real challenge. Can I actually watch a YouTube video on this guy? It's time for 144p, boys. Oh, wait, wait, hang on a second. Nah, <laughs> it can almost do it. It's so close. I wonder if there's a way of maybe getting like some sort of plugin or something to kind of help optimize this. It's just asking a lot. But of course, you're not going to buy a Raspberry Pi as a YouTube machine. So there are a fair few apps pre-installed on the Pi. So not only do you have a lot of options if you want to learn how to code, but you also have some basic Office apps, you have Chrome, you have an email client. But what's interesting is that there's actually a version of Minecraft for this. Obviously Minecraft is not the most graphically demanding game in the world, but still, for something that's this tiny, I actually will be really surprised if it works. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Not only does it work, it works smoothly. Like, sure, the graphics have been turned down to pretty much the basic levels, but it's Minecraft. It's not like exactly a super graphically demanding game. And not only does it work with Minecraft, Minecraft comes pre-installed on this guy. We're obviously asking a lot trying to play Minecraft at 1080p on this guy, but the fact that Minecraft works at all is cool. Oh, yo, it works. We're playing Minecraft at 1080p right now. Wow. All right, you know what? 
This is awesome. This is worth it almost just if you want to use it as a Minecraft machine. For $10, this thing is really cool. These guys are kind of hard to find right now, but I will do my best to find a link to check this guy out in the description. And I'm curious, what do you guys think about this little tiny computer? Let me know in the comments below and I will catch you on the next one.